Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But then again, you know that, don't you? Because that's why you've tuned in. Today I'm joined by Chris from Glasgow. He's a big boxing fan, or he's a hardcore boxing fan, so he tells me. And he's got some questions that he wants to ask me. How are you doing, Chris? Are you all right? Um, very good. Porky, how are you? How are you? I'm all right. Did you know today is uh, the 27th of November? It's free year today since I did my first video. So. Oh, I, I knew, I didn't know it was around about the three year mark. I didn't know exactly it was yeah. to the date, but I say, I've been watching the channel for the start. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank, I've never, I've never, I don't think we've ever emailed each other or spoke before, have we, Chris? So you're a, you're a bit of a dark horse. <laughs> <laughs> so, how old are you, Chris, you don't mind me asking? 31. 31, and you're a big, massive boxing fan, obviously, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Who's your favourite one? my boxing. Watch all, all boxing, all boxing. Who's your favourite one? Eh, uh, what? Over the years or current? Hmm? I'll just have a <laughs> cheap Friday night treat, isn't it? Oh, you're on orange. Oh. Not orange, what is it? Mad dog. Oh, I've never, uh, I've never seen, I've never heard of that before. Is that what they drink in Glasgow? Uh, uh, Mad Dog and Buckfast. Oh, Buckfast, what's that? Uh, wine. Oh, right, well, you've topped me with that then, haven't you? With me with my four bottles of uh, black sheep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I know you like your black sheep. Sorry, on you go, Russell. Yeah, I have a drink of black sheep on a Friday night. It's been a stressful week. So, who's your favourite boxer up there then, Josh Taylor? No, I don't like him. No? No. He's a very good boxer. He's just not my cup of tea. At, yeah. at this moment in time, Bo. I like Tyson Fury. Yeah, well, he's the number one, isn't he? Heavyweights. Aye. He just... I know there's a lot of criticism and all that sort of stuff, but I, I like him. He's come back story. I don't like Anthony Joshua. I, I just don't like the man. Yeah. I know he's done very well for himself, blah, 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 but just no my cup of tea. But as I say, George Taylor, very good boxer. Uh, as I say, Martin Bicoli. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Bicoli's trains with, he's up in Airdrie, just up through Glasgow. Billy Nelson. I mean, Billy Nelson, I. But uh, what do you think of him, Porks? What do you think of Martin Bicoli? Uh, I think he's all right. <laughs> I was there when he uh, sparred Yui and he cut Yui four weeks before Yui fought um, Pula. And he cut him. And uh, everybody was shocked, shocked, weren't they? But he, he, uh, and he opened up, didn't it, to, in the second round in, when we went to Bulgaria. So he's not my cup of tea, Martin. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't like him then, actually, for what happened. But And, you know, I've, I've heard he's a pretty decent kid. Like, do you know what I mean? Obviously, he's, he's said a few things on social media that's rubbed a few people up the wrong way. But he looks like he's it mixed, doesn't he, to do well? Oh, but, young, you? Yeah, I totally agree. But I, I, really, I really, really like Huey Fury as well. I think... He's still young. I think he'll definitely be a world champion in the next few years if he gets his chance, hundred percent. Well, let, well, let's let's hope let's hope so. Hugh's only just turned twenty six, so let's hope yep. uh, what what fights he's had and he's lost three fights, hasn't he? But let's hope that he's learnt from that and he, he's uh, he's more seasoned as he gets stronger and older. I suppose yeah, he's heavier now than what he were. Hugh now is. Put a couple of stone on and since he fought back. Uh, yeah, well, as I say, it was it, it was only a, a young man. He hadn't even had his man strength yet. He's, yeah. He had the... He, he actually... He bet Joseph... He still got a decision against Joseph Parker. He won that fight. Yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, obviously, they poorly ever get cut. He still went to 12 rounds. Uh, and I think, see, with um, Peter... Peter's a... A fantastic trainer, in my opinion. Yeah. He's just boxing through and through. And with, he's done with Savannah Marshall. I really, really like Savannah. And I don't know if you've seen it yourself. I seen it last night on Twitter. 
Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, Porky. Yeah. Uh, Clarissa, Clarissa Shields put a tweet out last night saying she just signed a new three-year contract. Basically, what she had said is, I'm tied up for the next three years. What, I don't know if you've seen it yourself. I haven't seen that. No, I haven't seen it. Is that doing MMA or boxing? The tweet was, it never mentioned boxing or MMA. The tweet was, um, have I just done the right, have I just made the right decision? I am tied up for the next three years. So she, she, some, yeah. she signed some sort of contract, you know. Who with? It never said, it never says. It was, it was from her Twitter account. It just said, have I made the right decision? I'm signed up for the next three years. Then like dot 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 after it. Well, it could be weird here for all we know, couldn't it? It gets where water goes, doesn't it? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Or is she signed this contract with elsewhere, so she doesn't need to have a fight with Savannah? Because me personally, hands down, I think Savannah will batter her. Yeah, Savannah's a lot taller, and I think she's about four or five inch taller. Mm -hmm. Bigger girl when when once they've refueled and got in the ring. And she's got a win over her. And she's got more power than her. So everything's in Savannah's favour, isn't it? If she fights it. Yeah. She will fight, sorry, she will fight it in the UK because Peter can't go to America. Yep. Last time yeah. Peter went to America, he got arrested. And <clears throat> <laughs> you, know, you know that, don't you? He tried to sneak in up train, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Locked him up, put him on a plane to take back to the UK, but... So if Savannah fights, he won't be without Peter. It'll be in the UK or... Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe Peter might go to Canada because they got to Canada, didn't they? But I think it'd be, probably be the UK if they fight. So maybe she don't want it. She's, I don't know. But Savannah thinks that her ego will, will get her to fight her. So we'll see, won't we? I, I, I watched an interview with you and Savannah yeah, last week. Yeah. And I had a really good interview, so it was... And I think Clarissa is that kind of person. She's a big ego person, you know. So, yeah. especially if somebody beats you in the amateurs, they come into the pros, world champion. The only be what you have not got in that division. You want to go and win it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's so, cool. yeah. So, all right, let's we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, Chris. Moving on then, Chris, I believe you've got some questions that you want to talk about. Some, sorry, you want to ask me about, yeah? Yeah, uh, so what do you think about uh, Dubois, Joyce, tomorrow? A, I think it's a great fight, Chris. Oh, I, I think it's fantastic. I think that uh, I think that Frank Warren's got to have a lot of respect for not sticking to his guns and doing pay-per-view. <clears throat> Even when the Fury Caballel fight fell through, he didn't revert this back to pay per view because he could have quite easily done that and stuck another couple of fights on and said it's a stack card because Eddie would have done that, wouldn't he? Oh, definitely. I tip my heart off to Brick Top and the team around <laughs> him Andy Aylin, uh, George and Francis, Alfie Warren, Bobby Warren. They've really, really done well and they've given something back to the fans that. Nobody else is doing. They've, they've given us a, a, a 20 quid pay per view for free, and I, I, and I think that's brilliant. And you've got to reward them for, for that and say, Look, you know what? I take my hat to them. They've done good. And also, aren't they giving uh, loads of tickets away to NHS as well, aren't they? I, yeah, I, well, I've seen that with Frank. He says, um, I think that's on the Anti Ard and London Arthur fight. Yeah. Like, there's a, well, you're, you're allowed up to a thousand fans, but I think what Frank was saying is that however many people want to come, they'll be given the tickets away for free. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. And I, and I, and I, it got, is, it's really good. I've, I've been very critical of Frank Warren over years, but I think he's running rings around Eddie at the moment with what he's doing for fans. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. He's looking at boxing for the future, whereas Eddie's looking at let's get what we can now. Kind of thing. Do you think you agree, Chris? Oh, 100 percent, Pokey. The only thing Eddie Helm thinks about is pound notes, and I know a bit like yourself, with Frank, this and that. But this last while, in my opinion, 
he just seems to be a lot calmer and keeps going on about the fans and I want to put the best fights on. I'm putting my guys in with my guys. You don't see Maxim putting their guys in with their guys. No. And he's right to a certain extent. But I think, you know, because at the end of the day, he's, he's putting on the London Arthur and the Yard. Yeah. Their BT, their BT, it's a good fight. Yeah. Really. Both under, both under, well, London Arthur's undefeated, aren't the Yards defeated for Kovalev, but minus that defeat, he's, he's won every fight. He's a big name. Dubois Joyce on subscription, don't need to pay for it, which is a really good fight. He's putting a lot of guys in with his own guys, you know what I mean? Are you sure Lyndon Arthur's undefeated? Aye, undefeated, aye. Well, it's a good fight then, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Oh, aye, but I still think Yard will win, but <coughs> uh, it's a good fight. Yeah. Good fight. Uh, all right, then. Uh, what fights would you like to see between Matchroom and Queensbury? I would like to see... Callum Johnson. I really, really rate Callum Johnson. I, do. I think I really rate the guy Porky. He's just not getting his chance. But to your question, we'd like to see him and with Boatsy. Yeah. Him and Boatsy, but Matchroom wouldn't take that fight, in my opinion. I don't think they would. Um obviously Fury Joshua. I fancy Fury every day of the week. Over Joshua, I don't think it will happen next year. Because I've heard yourself saying I don't think it will happen. No, 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 I think they'll just try and keep the money coming in. Yeah, and to say the thing with the poor Lev thing, um, why have a, ma- a rematch cause when it's a mandatory challenger? Yeah, do you know what I mean? What other fights would you like to see between them? I would like to see uh, um, I would like to see Yard in Boatsy as well. I'd like to see they two they two fight. Would you like to see Daniel Dubois against Dylan White? Oh I I would love to see that, but that would just never happen. In my opinion, that just wouldn't happen. You think, that, say, you think that Dylan White's got a big mouth and that he <laughs> pulls people out but then don't fight them? Oh, 100%. I say, the guy he's been fighting, he said, but many four or five pay-per-views. He's, he's been, done it six in January, isn't he, against uh, I Sorry, against Povetkin. This will be six. It get, it gets sparked out in his last fight for Povetkin. I know he's winning the fight, but end of the day, he gets splattered all the canvas. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, he's been fighting guys who are 40-plus year old. He got offered the the Joshua fight, belt, or the belts, obviously minus the WBC, five-plus million, knocked it back. So, because of his numbers in the IFL, I think people want to see him fight. Well, no, Tom, Little, no. Tom Little does numbers on IFL and so does Dave Allen. <laughs> they've not got a belt. Uh, I just think Dylan comes across as this, he's this big guy for Brixton, tough and all that. But end of the day, who's he fighting? He's no fighting it. No, you know what I mean? Who's he fighting? 41 year old man. Exactly. So I don't understand. The same as Chisora. No, that fight, I watched the fight with him and Yusik. Um, I've been the last couple of days. I've been watching the build up to this fight with David Tay. Yeah. <laughs> David Tay is just an absolute pimp, isn't he? He's just a whore. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's absolutely unbelievable. The guy. Do you find it amazing now David A can go from Sky and then go over to BT Sport? It's like, Aye. like putting, <laughs> criminal and working for police, isn't it? Aye, exactly. 
I don't know how he does it. And I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Sorry, on you go, Porky. I, I, I know how he does it. He's got a following on social media and that's what the TV stations want. They're not bothered about whether he's an arse or not. They're bothered about him doing numbers and that's what's no, driving I'm... the sport at the moment. You don't need to be having belt. David ain't got a belt at the moment. He's not a fighter. Uh, there's other people that have not got belts and are, uh, and, uh, are not. There's retired boxers out there that have never won a belt that they're going to give positions to in the media because they do numbers. numbers that's what it's all about it's like we had a chat before we turned the record button on about me obviously i've got my channel's been going three years from today and uh the, the, you know sooner or later the powers that be are like well what's happening here with this channel russell they, they have to it has to uh Numbers have to make it work, don't they, for everybody in all walks of life, don't we? We can all play at it, play at it, but it's it's time for my channel to start getting a bit serious now. And I am trying my best, but it's same with boxing, isn't it? The only they're not going to put somebody like Savannah Marshall on to commentate on a boxing match because she she doesn't do numbers, does she? Where she's a world champion amateur, two-time yeah. Olympian, and a world champion as a pro, she's beat Clarissa Shields, but. They're not going to give Savannah Marshall the gig, are they? Because she 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 don't want she's not engaging on social media like David A. Do you know that kind of thing? It's not a slight on her. Or they're not going to give it Yui Fury, are they? They're going to give it David A, aren't they? Do you see where I'm coming yep. from? Yeah, hundred percent. But my argument with it, Chris, is this: whatever happened to talent? Whatever happened to talent? Do you know what I mean? That yeah, get, be Yep. Where I'm coming from. Yep, 100%, you're a hundred percent right. And as I say, with a lot of these pundits who are on Sky at the moment as well, like in my personal opinion, like, like that, you've got Dave Caldwell, Bellu. Like, Bellu has been he was a Sky Sports fighter for years under Matchroom. Even the likes of that, the Chisora Usik fight, he's sitting shouting, trying to swear at judges. Yeah. All that carry on. You get Dave Caldwell, or we thought Chisora won the fight. Um, you get Bean sitting there commentating. Mister Bean, he just really annoys me. That guy as well. This <laughs> Bean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Porky? The likes of like that, Bell, you Caldwell. Sitting shouting when try to sway sway the judges and as I say I watched Usyk's interview. I think it was with Michelle Phelps. It was Usyk and his manager, and she brought that up about Bellu shouting, and he was like, ah, "Yeah, I know what they were trying to do and all that sort of stuff." You know what I mean? It's just it's I'm trying to influence judges, weren't they? Ah, 100%. And then Bell, you've got Bell, you coming out after it saying, I never said Chisora won the fight. I, yes, you did. He did say that. He did say he thought Bell, you, uh, Chisora won the fight. Then you've got Dave Caldwell. Oh, oh, I went home and watched I went home and watched it with the sound off and uh, Yusik won it. But I don't understand. They're sitting ringside so they've got a better view than MD. Yeah. So if you're sitting ringside, you know, you can see the fight better than somebody who's sitting in their house. You know what I mean? Yeah. In my opinion, I've been I've been I've been to fights. So if you if you're sitting ringside, you can see everything. Yeah. And they're trying to sit and see all that sort of stuff. It's just it's not right. Yeah. It's, uh, uh... My argument with that is Derek Chisora, Dave Caldwell, he trained him then for one camp, plus the yep. mate. Del Boys and Derek Del Boy and Tony Bell you were mates. So why have you got them ringside as expert expert analysis in a working capacity? Yep. The people yep. who, in a working capacity next to a boxing ring should be former world champions because they can give their expert analysis. I don't want to mm-hmm. see anybody outside of a ring who was not a world champion giving an giving analysis <laughs> fights 
whatsoever because how are they experts? Yep. Oh, I don't mind commentators. Barry Jones, yeah. There's enough uh, former world champions out there that can hold a microphone and give an opinion on boxing. Oh, of course, of course. They don't use Clinton Woods because when Clinton mm. Woods did it at Sky, he said something regarding a fight and afterwards they said to him, oh, Clinton, you can't say that. And Clinton says, what are you on about? I'm here to give my expert analysis. That's what you've yep. And brought me down here to do it. I think it was a, it were in a studio. I think it were on a on a, an American show, an American show, and you were in the studio with them. Robin Reed did not have him down because you've got to dance to their tune, right? If and, yep. and obviously some of the people that are involved with Sky, your Bell use and the rest of them, they over dance to the tune, don't they? Carl Froch. Oh, well, I'm not just saying yeah. that I know him. He doesn't, right? Yeah. I was going to say that. Sorry for cutting you off. Yeah, okay. on, Throch, he, he has been one of my favourite fighters. Yeah, Fate, he came through. Absolute brilliant. The man's just got so much grit, determination, hard, hard as nails. And as I say, when they when they're the commentating, yeah, whatever he thinks, whatever he thinks, he'll say. Because he's he can take it or leave it. That job, Carl. He, his money exactly. The money for but, him about doing the job, but, but at the end of the day, see, in my opinion, see whether if you've got the money or no, if they've asked you to come on to do a job, yeah, if you're an ex fighter, world champion, fought, fought for in a world title fight like Macklin, but he's not been a world champion. If you've been asked to go in there to do a job, you know what you're doing, you know what you're watching, yeah. so whatever you're seeing, you're saying. And if they don't like it, they'll not bring you back. I don't think that's right. Paulie Malignaggi, they don't have him around now, do they? After what he said, do they? They got rid of him, didn't yep. they? Former two-time world champion. Brilliant commentator. Brilliant. And my, I think Paul, I, I think Paul is a great commentator. He knows his boxing inside out. Bean got rid of uh, Jim Watt <laughs> and Glenn McCrory. Right, yep, Glenn McCrory as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Why don't they have like Lennox Lewis on or people like that? There's other world champion boxers. Joe Calzaghe, Ricky Hatton, they don't give a look in, do they? Former world champions. Nazim Ahmed, they don't have him on. Chris no. Eubank Senior, they don't have him on, do they? Why? These are all former world champions. Nigel Ben, they don't have him on. Why? Because these people will probably just tell it as they see it. We're, exactly. We're stuck, stuck in a routine now. Are people on there at Sky at the moment that are very comfortable and all got the feet on the table? I'm not going to go into too much detail, but very yeah. comfortable and they all know that they've got to read off same him sheet. Well, it's starting yeah. to annoy a lot of people now. My inbox is chock a block every every Sunday and Monday morning with it, and it's every Sky show. Now we want to see some non-biased comments. We want to see somebody come out and say, "Look, here is me pal, but I thought he lost." And that would do that'd be that'd do it for me. That would do yeah. it. I thought he lost eight rounds to four, <laughs> pal, and, and Eddie will bring him back, but he got beat tonight, and I don't agree with judges. That's all they've got to stay. He said these fighters coming over to eat this country and they're getting jobbed, for example. You heard what Ozzy Smith said on Boxing Asylum, that the UK is now the worst place to come in world boxing. It's worse than Germany. It's worse than Italy, and it's worse than America. It is worse than all them places, even Russia. We are the dog's arse of judging now. It's a, it's a, it's a pandemic. Aye. What's going on now at the moment is a pandemic with, with the judging in this country, and the refereeing as well. It's very, very poor. It's the same old referees that they wheel out every show, and the same judges, because they, just they do both, don't they? And it's got to change. Boxing's got to change for it to move forward. We're stuck in a rut. I know I keep banging on about it and people can say it's negative. And even my kids say, oh, God, not that again, Dad. But <laughs> it's, it's, I'm just saying it as it is. And if people don't want to listen to it, the simple thing is don't watch. Don't watch. You know me, right? it. I go to my mate's house, right? And he puts this, uh, what do they call it now, this program now? He puts this program on, it's some location, location. It's about all these houses that you buy that are knackered and you do them up. But the well, program- I, I, watched, I watched that post. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 
I wasn't willing to live here, Chris. No, I'm uh, saying I go to my uh, mate's house and he's got that. Uh, it's six year old, the program, and and I yeah. said the price is a bit out of date, and it, and then it's oh, it's a 2011. I said, what are you watching it for again then on Dave Channel or whatever it is, some channel? Mm -hmm. I said, what are you watching it again for then? And it, and I said, he says, well, there's something to watch. And I said, you know what I do? If I don't want to watch something I don't like, I don't watch it. Because I haven't got that many hours. There's only so many hours in day, so I don't want to waste 30 minutes, 50 minutes an hour watching summer. So this is what I say. People don't like it, don't watch. But Eddie yeah, Ernst took that into the pay-per-view argument. Well, don't pay for it then. And I think that's wrong. Because they could have still put this show on with Joshua and charged a lot less than 20 quid. They could have charged 15 quid. Because pool has 40, in here after Christmas? Let me just have a quickly. Yeah. No. No worries, mate. No worries. You've got to drain the main vein, aren't you, Chris? I suppose you'll know about all that, won't you? Being up Scotland, up there, Glasgow, we all ail your neck on a night. <laughs> of course. It's got boxing's got to change for the better, but it's got to start from the top from border control down to Eddie Earn and them, and then it'll filter down to, to Adam Smith at Sky, and then he'll filter it down to his lieutenants who do the punditry. It's got to come from the top. And, and once it comes from the top, they set a president, right? And everybody thinks, right, we've got to be honest here. We've got to start being... We've got to start saying, who won? You know, these, if, these scorecards that they do, for example, on Sky, the unofficial scorecard, yeah? Yep. Matthew Macklin does it, or, or Carl Frotch, whoever. They're giving an opinion. They're not a judge. But we've got to start seeing some scorecards that are... That are right. I know. I know. We go back to the Ritson one, don't we, with Terry O'Connor? I was sorry for interrupting you. I was actually going to. I was going to bring that one up to you. About one, yeah. the, I know it was a few weeks back, but the Ritson Vasquez, that was shocking. Even Macklin and Bean, they had. Bean. Um, <laughs> Stand your laptop in Bean. We know you're watching. <laughs> Stand it into the nearest police station and just unburden yourself. <laughs> unburden yourself and just tell us where bodies are. <laughs> but we, but I'm a sod, but, aren't I? But, <laughs> but that was, these go cards were shocking. You know, they, they were really, really bad. And Terry O'Connor, <laughs> who was that man? He must, have, he must have been sitting drinking whiskey or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know Terry O'Connor's been involved in 1,500 shows. 1,500, if you want. Put Terry O'Connor's name into box rec. So he's had 1,500 lumps of dough. Lumps. And been all around the world. Flown, fly, fly around the world. Feed them, water them, put them up in hotels. Pick them up in limos. And if not, and they're in England, they get mileage, 45p a mile, hotel, food and beverage. He's had 1,500 over 20 odd year free gratis. Yeah, I, what I say to that, don't you, Chris? Whatever you've had, Terry, consider it <laughs> pay. Take the train and get out of Dodge. <laughs> but he's not going to do that, is he? You're not going to give that up, is he? Why would oh. you take a brown envelope off a promoter when you're getting paid very well and all your expenses and treat like a king for weekend? Why would you exactly. need to take a brown envelope? You know, you've got to go with that promoter. He's not telling you to do it because there's none of that goes on. You just feel that it's a duty of care to do it. But do you know what? Human beings are creatures of habit. So we know yeah. what goes on. Can you imagine that happening in the football world? You won't have 
Ferguson taking, uh, what's that referee now? I, I don't know, Mike Riley or whoever. These referees, that imagine them going out for a meal with Alex Ferguson or Klopp. They'd be hell on, wouldn't they? Oh, of course. The night it just wouldn't the match. Wouldn't yeah. So, all right, they're moving on from the sky bias and what we need to do to change boxing with judging. What other things would you like to talk about, Chris? What you've got wrote down to ask me, or, or is it in your head? You just come into you. Oh, no, I, I've got everything in my head. I've got stuff wrote down, but in my head. But another thing I would like to speak about is is this, I know we spoke about it earlier on about Chisora and Hay. What do you think they're going to go next? Uh, I think they're going to wait for the Povetkin White fight. If Dylan White wins, they're going to scream for the fight. And if he loses, they're going to scream for the fight. If Dylan White wins, Chisora haven't really got a leg to stand on to fight Dylan White. But if, sorry, if Dylan White, Dylan White beats Povetkin, Chisora can't really scream for the fight. But Dylan White doesn't seem to be in a rush to fight Fury or Joshua, does he? Mm. So Dylan might Dylan White might take it as a as because he likes them keep busy pay per view fights, doesn't he? He's the only fighter that keeps knocking yep. pay per views and not fighting for a European title. So Dylan White and Chisora, David Day will be beating the drum, and Eddie Earn likes people who do numbers on social media. So David Day will beat the drum. Chisora will beat the drum. They might go in a in a bus and go to Dylan White's house, you know, like Sonny Liston did to Ali. <laughs> well, Ali, Ali to Sonny Liston. So <laughs> there'll be some. They'll be cooking up some between themselves to get a few quid, and that's what it's all about for them. Pulling wool over fans' eyes, and these casuals, they buy into it. They think it's. They think it. They think it's gospel, don't they? If they told something on social media, they think it's. True. I mean, years ago, I I used to go out and I'd come in and I'd say something to my dad and my dad would go, I don't believe that. Who told you that? And I'd go, geezer in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, this, isn't it? Who told you that? Oh, Eddie Earn or Chisora said it on Twitter, so it must be true. What are they going to do? They're going to try and engineer Dylan White and Chisora for a trilogy. That's what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and get a trilogy and sell the first fight as Derek's win. The second one that Derek were winning it, and he just got caught to end because of bad ref. Yep. He had to chase the fight because he needs to take a point off him. Or who was yep. in that fight? Were it Ian John Lewis? I forget. I forget I, who the referee I can't, was. I can't remember. I'm not sure, but didn't Chisora get a point took off him or two points? I don't know. It's that long. Yeah, he got a point yeah. took off him. Yeah, that was right. And he had to chase the fight, didn't he? And he's going to say, well, that's why he got caught in a fight he was winning. So there's got to be a third one. So then they're going to argue and argue with Toss. Dylan's going to say, well, I'm 60 and he's 40 because he's had a loss and I've just had a win. Blah, blah, blah. And they're going to whip up a storm. They'll send Coogan Cassius in, Robert Abbott in, Michelle Phelps in, Matchroom Boxing YouTube in, Sky, and they'll cook it all up in a broth and it'll be nice and bubbly. They'll bubble us. <laughs> got some bubbling here. They'll bubble it up. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll package it as 1995 on pay per view, and these casuals will buy it, and people like me and you will be screaming blue murder because we're going to stream it. Yep, I've got. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I've got there, but I don't pay for it. <laughs> Nobody does nowadays, do they? If they've got any sense. But, uh, oh, no, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about? I'm not sure if you've seen it, Steve, on uh, the Sport Icons video about Wilder I don't and watch, J.D. ads. I don't watch him, he's hiding behind the camera. Uh, 100%, I know where you're coming from, but it's, I was just like, flicking through YouTube, it was actually, it was yesterday, and I'd just seen the headline, and it was basically saying, um, it shows you pictures when J.D. has... Usually, G. Diaz is after every round, he isn't in the ring. He's outside and somebody else is in. But for this, I, I'm not sure what round it was. But if you go on YouTube, you'll see it yourself. Yeah. He comes in, he, he comes in, because they were talking about the, the dent on Wilder's head, right? And he's wiping the towel. And 
he pulled Wilder goes back up into the ring he pulls the towel away and this wee white thing falls out so basically what sporting icons was saying is was that like, uh, when they said they were talking about the water being spiked were they trying to set up Mark Breland because they knew Wilder was going to get beat so this was some drug or something they put into Wilder's mouth so after the fight it would fail the test. Then they've come out and blame Mark Breland for spiking his water and all that carry on. Uh, this is how I look at it, right? Wilder got, got beat fair and square, didn't he? Oh, 100%. They get bashed. It, best thing he can do is stay quiet and then come out and say, look, you know what? I got beat. I, I, I've racked my brain for excuses why I got beat, and sometimes you just got to put your hand up and go. I got beat by a better man on night, and I just want to get the third fight on. I want to get my belt back, and I want to put it right. That's all he's got to say. That's all he's got to say, isn't it? Really? I, I, as I say, it was five, six years, been, but champion, ten of them defenses. See me, my personal opinion. I think still till this day. <laughs> Wilder would beat Joshua. Yeah, he would spark. He would spark Dillian White. Oh, so, in my opinion, he's still number two. I think he would beat Joshua still in a fight. Joshua is no chin. He's not got a chin. No, he's no beard. So, I, I don't see how Wilder just kind of come back. Yeah. And all this, all this rubbish. Way is I seen Dillian White. I'm the A side. Uh, no, he's why to fight because he's been beating all that. But as I say, Dylan White, what's he won? A British title. A mate, <laughs> British. <laughs> Against uh, Lewison. You know what I mean? Well, well, there's like, 10 or 11 defences. I know he's no fought. He's fought a few good guys. Ortiz twice. Fury twice. Brazil, who is maybe... He's no world level, but it's a, a kind of... Joshua fought mm. when Joshua was fighting with Brazil. Eddie Helm was oh dominant Brazil, this and that, shouting for the heavens. He was a great fighter. Then when Wilder fight him, fights him, ah, Joshua's already beat him. You know what I mean? So they say the guy was still ten, eleven title defenses, world champion, W, the best belt in boxing in my opinion, WBC. So. He's still up there. He's still up there. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, but you don't know what it's took out him mentally, do we? Aye. I know. That's a very, very good point. As I say, of his first defeat in about 40, 41, 42 fights. So, but as I say, he seems to be a strong-minded guy. Obviously, the way he's going to know, it doesn't, but before all this, it seems to be, you know what I mean? So, I just think, him personally, he's got a lot of yes men around him. You know what I mean? Was Wilder. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the case. That's what I mean. He's uh, got a lot of hangers on around him. That's what happens. So, at the highest level, you need people around you, people around you who are going to tell you how it is and tell you straight. As I say, likes of Diaz and I know Breland, great guy and all that, but end of the day, Will does pulling the strings, isn't he? Yeah. Whatever he says goes. So you can't you can't you can't have yes men around you when you're at the very, very top level. Yeah. Especially after taking a defeat. You need people just to tell you straight, listen. You need to do this, you need to do that, and just get your head down and go on with it. You know what I mean? To get back to where, back to the top again. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree, mate, wholeheartedly. Yeah. All right then. Uh, what else would you like to uh, ask or bring up? Um, what do you think of the Canelo Smith fight coming up? I think it's a great fight. Two undefeated, uh, sorry, one undefeated guy and other guy who's only lost to Mayweather, but mm -hmm. 50 odd wins on him, one defeat. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, it's a great fight. You've probably got best guy out there against 
probably best super middle. Uh, what we're going to see who, who is, aren't we? Callum Smith, WBA champion, Ring Magazine, undefeated. Done everything asked of him, man. He's gone through all levels. I think he's been protected myself and guided by his trainer. Uh, his trainer might think he's been harsh there, but they've guided him into a, a position of being a millionaire and winning every belt, you know, coming through and mm -hmm. getting a ring magazine belt. So I think he's been protected and looked after. and it, But he's, he's done it. He's breezed through, hasn't he? So mm -hmm. he's either a really, really fantastic fighter and we've not seen the best of him or he's a fraud and he'll get knocked out. So we're going to find out because it's his biggest test in it and he couldn't get a bigger test, could he? No. Yeah. And my, my personal opinion, I, I, my opinion, I think Canelo is pound for pound number one. If you look at his resume, what, 14, 15 yeah. world champions he's beat. Yeah. This, if he beats Carlos Smith, this will be his fourth weight division. It will be a four division champion. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And as I say, I watched it, obviously, the, the Smith and Ryder fight. I thought John Ryder won the fight. It was a, a close fight, but I still thought John Ryder won the fight. So did, if you went on social media after it, you've seen 90% of people were saying Ryder won that fight. Yeah. And then, uh, but as I say, Carl Smith, good fighter. I've watched a few of his interviews and he's been the same as Tesco Joe saying uh, he, he has to get these top fighters so he produces his best. But me personally, if you're a fighter, you should go out and try and perform your best. Or every fight. I know, I do understand that that can't happen all the time. But previous to the John Ryder fight, he was fighting, was it that kickboxer guy? And the... Halskin. Aye, Halskin. And it, it couldn't knock him out. I know he done George Groves. Groves had a bad shoulder or whatever, but he still won the fight. Pass him and damn. So, when you're fighting the kind of guys, then got to fight Canelo. I just think it's, it's maybe a step too far, but all the best of the guy. He's made a lot of money. He's going to make a lot more money. He's the number one guy in the division, so he deserves a fight, in my opinion. Uh, let me just touch on something there. Callum, he, he's already, sorry, Canelo was already a four-weight world champion, isn't he? Well, well it's a, so, light heavy, then super middle with the Rocky Fielding. Yeah. One five four and one four seven. No, was it five four? Yep, five four one uh sixty. One sixty, oh, one six eight. One six what one five four one sixty beat Canelo, didn't he? One sixty eight Rocky Fielding and Kelvin left one seven five. That's four in it. Hey, sorry, so that, this will be going for five then. No, no, this so, is still four. It's still four weight divisions, isn't it? Because this is super middle, isn't it? Oh, I saw it's still one, six, eight. Yeah, yeah. Aye, so, about Rocky Fielding's belt being a regular and belt and all that kind of thing. I see, I see where you're coming from, though, yeah. We can pick bones at the bottom amongst it all day, can't we? I will supposedly, I think, well, John Reid does get... He's maybe fighting on the, the 12th, is it? On the undercard. I, I can't mind what fight it is. Maybe against Chudinov, which is maybe for a for that regular belt or a eliminator yeah, or whatever. Eliminator, so yeah. John Ryder seems to have gone under radar, Chris. Do you think? I, as I say, not the ones they fight him. I know he's he's fought Billy Joe, close fight. Calm Smith, close fight. So, <coughs> excuse me. And he's not very popular. It doesn't just come out social media shouting his mouth off and all that, but good fighter. Yeah. As I say, if one person who, and I know I'm going to be a bit off track here, but Billy Joe, I've always liked Billy Joe, good fighter. Yeah. 
We talk, he talks good, but he's not fighting MD. No. <laughs> he's a two weight world champion, this guy, Porky, you know what I mean? And you're like, who? I know what you mean. Who, who's he? He's. Who's he fighting? He's fighting Martin Murray. What I want to know about that, Chris, is Martin Murray's been out of the ring 13 months, or so how's he all yeah. been slotted in into the top 15 rankings to get a, for Billy to get class him as a voluntary defence of a world title? Yeah. How, I, how, how can that be? <laughs> I know. Be? It's crazy, isn't it? The guy's not been fighting, so but I just don't understand. The thing with Billy, as I say, back to, back to uh, Mark Tibbs, uh, in my opinion, very, very good trainer, the guy, brilliant. Obviously, came up through his his father, Jimmy, brilliant. So, he done a great job with Dylan White. I thought what Dylan White done to Mark Tibbs was terrible, because Mark got about 10, 11 and 0. They went together. You know 11. what I mean? I love him fights in a row. Done brilliant for him. Dylan was a, a novice at the time. Brought him through. You know, he's a really good trainer. Make sure hard work all the time. But obviously, Billy's been back to him now, so we'll see Dylan, how Billy goes on. Dylan White thought it was the grass were green and then he and got knocked out and left Mark Tibbs and got knocked out, didn't he? That's what he went with that. Was it Chavia or something like that? Xavier. Xavier. That, <laughs> and then, as I say, I watched his interview after the fight. He's like, I had nothing to do with the team. We'd just get caught. And But, as I say, I don't know if it's why they think again. As I was going back earlier on, talk about Wilder. Is that just yes, man? Because Mark Tibbs isn't going to be a yes, man. You know what I mean? So, is that a VR guy, maybe, whatever Darlene says? He's going to do. Maybe no matter work as hard, but, but if he's in Mark Tibbs' gym, Mark will be like, you're doing this, doing that. He'll not take any rubbish, you know what I mean? Tails wagging dog now, isn't it, with Dylan White and his new trainer, whereas when he was with Mark Tibbs, it went all the way around. So oh, exactly. Trainer's in charge, isn't he? In my yeah. opinion, he'd always be in charge. Aye, exactly. As I was saying earlier on about Wilder, then they say, you, you know Mark Tibbs personally, you know what he's like. He's not going to take any rubbish off MD in the gym. If we don't want to listen to me, go to an art trainer, simple as that. What do you, could you imagine? Well, it did happen, didn't it? Well, could you imagine a certain person saying to Peter Fury, I want to get a Mr. Day training? What's <laughs> Peter? So listen, fuck off. Exactly. That's exactly. 100%. Now, but... Fuck off, <laughs> you know, if you're going to turn up late or do one. That's it, get gone. And as I say, sorry, sorry. me personally, that's the way it should be. If you go to a gym and you're training with a trainer, you let them take charge. As you say, Peter Fury. You get into his yeah, I've gym. I've seen it happen in Peter's gym. I've seen it happen. There's no... Uh, you've no, been there. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it happens in Mick Wales' gym. There's no prima donnas going. When you go in that gym, everybody's equal. There's nobody. There's no bosses. There's only one boss in a gym, and that's the head trainer. It's his gym. If you want to go in there and start acting, go or Billy Delson. He won't. He don't put it up there. He said, "Come on, get." I know. I know. So, and obviously Dylan White couldn't do that with Mark Tibbs. He can do it now because he's in charge, isn't he? He, 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 he think well, and he shouldn't be because that he's undermining that kid, and it never the relationships like that I've noticed don't work. For example, Ben Davidson and Billy Joe that didn't work, did it? I was I was going to mention that to yourself here. What did what did you think of Ben Davidson? Well, it seems to be it seems to be on every BT Sport interview, analysing every fight with David T. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He speaks well and he he, he looks the part. He's pretty pretty clean cut. He's pretty mm -hmm. uh, what's the word corporate and all that kind of thing. But as regards training, well, Tyson dropped him, didn't he? Billy Joe dropped him. They're not going to have yeah. media because they're all connected to MTK. But there's something there why they don't want Ben Davison to train them. I don't want to hear about all that. Well, he's got a gym in London and blah blah. blah. Well, why don't they take the fighters to London and train there and get digs around there? Mm -hmm. 
it's that if if there's no problem, they've obviously dropped him because he's not up to scratch. Now they were world champion fighters when he were working with them. He's not been there with him from the beginning, and they're already finished articles. So they probably know more than him, and that's why the tails wagging the yep. happened there. And this will happen with Dylan White. No, Dylan White's first fight with this new guy got iced. So already there might be chinks in armor. I've heard there is. So we're going to see down the line what happens. But the trainer should be in charge, in my opinion, of the gym. From training, strength and conditioning, what you eat. Simple as that. Frank Bruno never had a strength and conditioning or a nutrition guy. And you're always in fantastic shape. So this is, this is how I look at it. Right, yeah. Everybody wants to alt pads and get on Instagram and be known as a boxing trainer and go have an interview with Border Control and get a license. Here you go, I'm a boxing trainer now. There's more to it than that. Go up, go, come up through the ranks, learn your craft, and then call yourself a boxing trainer. Just don't go get a badge and hold a few pads and tell a few jokes on Twitter and pal a few people up that are world champions and hover around them and say you're a boxing trainer. You've got to learn your craft. It takes years. So, but I ain't got nothing, nothing against Ben Davidson, nothing against him whatsoever. I don't even know him, but looking up from the outside in, he's just—he looks like a schoolboy, doesn't he? Looks like he should be in school doing his maths. What I mean, that hundred percent. And as I say, that's what I'm going back to, Porky. The likes are saying about Billy Joe Tyson, who were with Ben Davidson. Yeah. When they're in training camp, they're the ones who's in charge. Yeah, of course they are, mate. Yeah, of course. So they're probably just taking it easy, just kind of, oh, we'll just, we'll do this session today, we'll do that. But when you're like, sir, with Peter Fury, Mark Tibbs, even maybe Tesco Joe, we're doing this, this is what we're doing. And all the fighters listen to them. But at least, sir, when they were with Ben Davidson, they'll just take it easy. You know what I mean? Them, them that guys you've just been on about, they're right. They, they, they live it. T Tesco Joe, I mean, he's a proper hardcore boxing trainer from getting up in the morning to going to bed at night. That's all that's on his brains. Uh, and so is Mark Tibbs and Peter Fury. They live it. They live it, them people. Mm -hmm. Billy Nelson. So what, what like do you that. think about, um, obviously, how they carry on with Tesco Joe in... Eddie Hulls. Eddie Hulls. Uh, I don't think that uh, Joe Gallagher should have had to come out and grovel, uh, not grovel, I think grovel's a bit hard. He shouldn't have had to come out and apologise like that just for, for what he said. He was probably a bit irate because they not, won't get in the fight and this and that. I think the bottom line is they've not uh, give Terry Ar they've not given Jonas the fight against Terry Harper because Terry Harper can't fight a southpaw and she can't fight on inside. She likes to keep it long because she's tall. Well, she's five foot nine, so she's going to keep it long. She can't fight on inside and can't fight against southpaw. So they're going to stay out of way of Jonas, right? But Eddie should have come out like that and said that instead of saying, that, oh, well, we're going in a different route with Terry Harper because that, that's not good for to Natasha Jonas. So let's have it right. She won the fight clearly by it easily. Yep. Two rounds, three rounds in my book. So, 100%. the fact that Joe Gallagher had to come out and apologise, I don't agree with that. Not when Joshua were going on about Robert Mugabe's misunderstood, Eddie Chambers as a, 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 a disgrace to the black superior race, then going on them mm -hmm. marches and reading out big, big letters about race and this and that and all negative attention. Now they've got Joshua doing Google, interview, Google adverts. Google so adverts. Buying, buy, buy food from all sorts of uh, shops, from all sorts of people, from all sorts of races. They're trying to repair the damage. But I felt that they were harsh on Joe Gallagher, but they never said a dicky boo about uh, Joshua, did they? So I thought it were harsh ar ar yep. regarding Joe Gallagher, actually. I thought it were harsh. So, and like I said, uh, Joe Gallagher stick of it is, but I thought it were harsh. 100%. It's not even that. Terry Harper's fight a few a couple of weeks back there. Natasha Jonas, she was working for Sky, and they never, they never even mentioned the fight. They never even mentioned it. They wheeled it out on Sky and never said a dicky bird to her. Didn't we? She there? We were all waiting. 
for, Ter- for Natasha Jonas to say, I want to fight her, and for Terry Harper to say, and nothing got said, did it? Well, like, well what were the point of having Natasha, Natasha Jonas there? It was craziness. <laughs> I really found Natasha Jonas because she speaks very well. She's a lovely looking yeah. lass, isn't she? She's got mm-hmm. the uh, Olympic pedigree. Uh, and and I thought she should be in our world champion. So Natasha Jonas can like count herself. I don't know a victim or she was shafted, wasn't she? Ripped off. No, big time. She ripped off <laughs> in the fight. They wheeled her out on Sky and they've just this this whatever dismissed her, aren't they? So to speak. So <clears> oh, <throat> gosh, that gosh, mate. I never understood that. I, I, and then <clears throat> excuse me, I seen. Um, Terry Harper came out on Twitter. I know you don't really do Twitter, but yeah. I think it was like the Monday or the Tuesday after the fight, but I, I broke my hand in the third round. Ed, Eddie Hearn paid my... It, sorry, that's why you should have insurance in case something happens to you, but Eddie Hearn paid, I think it was four and a half grand or something, see for our, our medical bills. <laughs> Steffi Bull runs her Twitter, not Terry Harper, just so you know. Aye, aye. So, all so, right. Go on, sorry. When you were I, so I was just saying, I wasn't sure if you'd, if you'd seen that or no. Yeah, somebody but, sent me a screenshot of it. Well, if Eddie's done that, that's nice. But let me just say, Terry, Terry Harper does not run her social media. Steffi Ball runs it. But people know in industry, so. And, and he's done a brilliant job with it, and I'll take me out after him. Steffi, I'll take me out after you. But we're still going to get at it when we meet, mate. So, all right. <laughs> Oh, we are, mate. And you know, so all right then. Well, listen, it's Friday night, and I've got a couple of beers to drink before I get an hot bath and uh, jump in bed. It's been a long week, but listen, thank you very much for coming on for my three-year anniversary video. It's going to go out tomorrow. I'll get much a, appreciated, Porky. Thank you very much. We've got a new uh, intro, intro uh, beginning and end that is going to put on it for me. Uh, so just because it's the three year one way, it's three year and a day in it since the first video because it's going to go out tomorrow. But uh, thanks for coming on, Chris. You're welcome on. Thanks welcome. very much. Uh, what 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 were you drinking again, Chris? Let's have a look. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, that's what not to drink if you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> MD. What's it called? MD. MD twenty twenty. 2020, Mad Dog 2020. All right, then. That's the one. You have a good evening, Chris, and all the best to you and your family. Thanks very much. Cheers, Pokey Boy. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, that was Chris Wilkie from Glasgow. It was nice to have him on. Uh, he likes to drink, doesn't he? There's nothing wrong with that on a Friday night. I'm going to drink, is there? And uh, he's chilling out, is there? A bit of boxing talk We, uh, his uncle Porky. <laughs> so I'm going to get a bath now and uh, we'll send this to uh, Cameron and let him jazz it up for tomorrow for you. All right, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Allies. <laughs>